The North of England mule is by far the most popular lowland ewe in the United Kingdom. Why? It is no accident. This dominant position within the sheep industry is due to the acceptance by farmers that this original mule is unsurpassed as a profitable, easy care ewe, whatever the system. A look at the breed's background may well help to explain why. For generations now, North of England mules have been bred in the hill and upland areas of the northern counties. By the 1970s, however, other crosses were trying to latch on to the breed's popularity and calling themselves mules too. In 1981, it was decided to form the North of England Mule Sheep Association, known as NEMSA, and hold official sales so that prospective buyers could be assured that they were buying the genuine article rather than the counterfeit some traders were known to be passing off as the real thing. The North of England mule is sired by blue-faced Leicester rams, such as these, and out of Swaledale or Northumberland-type black-faced ewes. With a purebred lambing percentage of 230, the blue-faced Leicester is the most prolific native breed in the country and passes on this trait to its progeny. Crops of 180 to 200 percent are common amongst well-managed lowland flocks of North of England mules. Whilst retaining this prolificacy, the blue-faced Leicester has concentrated on improving its conformation in recent years, and huge strides forward have been made. As well as establishing a breed improvement flock, a classification scheme based on hind quarters, mouth, length, legs, and loin assessment is in operation to spotlight superior rams for use by North of England mule breeders. The milkiness and mothering ability of the Swaledale is well known, and the breed is popular throughout Northern England. Ewes such as these are born and reared on the harsh Northern fells, and spend most of their life grazing poor quality grass and heather. As the name suggests, the Northumberland type blackface is found foraging on the hills of England's most northerly county, and these big, hardy ewes have evolved specifically to breed North of England mules. In this area, flocks of Swaledales and Northumberland type blackface ewes run side by side on neighbouring farms, and consequently, Local sales include ewe lambs bred from both. While hill units may put a proportion of their ewes to the blue-faced Leicester, upland farms breeding north of England mules further down the hills often breed no purebred hill sheep at all and rely on buying draft breeding ewes or ewe lambs as a source of replacements. In this country, we have developed and enhanced the qualities of particular breeds with a very specific aim in mind. This movement of hill sheep bred for hardiness and maternal qualities to kinder, lower-lying farms, where they are mated with a very prolific, large-framed, long-wooled breed, the blue-faced Leicester, is the first stage in the stratification of the sheep industry that is almost unique to the UK. The result of this mating, the North of England mule, is the classic example in sheep breeding of hybrid vigour. This arises where parent breeds carry different dominant factors controlling desirable traits, the resulting cross being superior to either parent rather than the average of them. Hence this particular breed is in such demand from farmers looking for a ewe to breed and rear large crops of quality lambs in the lowlands. The final link in the chain are the specialised terminal breeds developed for carcass quality to produce animals almost exclusively for prime lamb production. How then is a mule producing flock managed? After being put to the blue-faced Leicester ram in November, the Swaledale and Northumberland type black-faced ewes usually winter on rough grazing. Hay or silage is fed after the turn of the year, depending on the severity of the winter. Concentrate feeding is introduced six to eight weeks before lambing and stepped up according to ewe condition and forage quality. 
Lambing takes place in April and May, usually on sheltered grazing close to home. A crop of 140 to 160 percent reared lambs is the norm on most upland farms. Ewes and lambs return to graze the higher ground soon after lambing so that hay and silage can be made on these lower fields. The price of wool has been in the doldrums but could rise and the cheque is still very welcome. purebred blue-faced Leicester is worth more per kilo than any other UK breed, it follows that the North of England mule produces a valuable, easily shorn fleece, good to handle and weighing well. In August, lambs are dosed and weaned onto aftermath to attain peak condition for sale. From late August until October, sales are held at centres throughout Northern England. The dates, numbers forward, and auction mart addresses, etc., are detailed in a sales booklet which can be obtained from the NEMSA secretary. Preparation for sale includes dipping and some clipping of the head and neck. These ewe lambs, often sold on only one or two days in the year, represent a major part of an upland farmer's income, so they need to make the most of them. Lambs are sold in lots of between 10 and 50, and the auction marts are always pleased to help potential buyers by sending sale catalogues, booking accommodation, coordinating haulage, and so on. The bigger lambs are generally put to the ram the same autumn to lamb at one year old, but it is common practice for younger sheep to be run on for an extra year before breeding. Some North of England mule lambs are also available through electronic auction system and direct sales can be arranged too. First started in 1957 um, when my father and I came up to buy them and what amazed us was is how well they lived and how well they did afterwards. And from then we've gradually grown up. Uh, I've been buying them, uh, we started buying them for myself up until about 1970 and then I started buying for other people. Uh, and uh, I've been buying ever since. She basically is the best commercial ewe about. Um, I mean, she, what I reckon it does, compared to quite a lot of the other ones, is it'll bounce back. Uh, if you treat it badly, she'll come back. You treat some of the other breeds badly and they just turn the four feet up in the air and that's it. Um, she produces good lamb, she's very, very uh, prolific and she's very milky, good mother. Uh, and whether you use a good Suffolk or a good Continental tup, uh, I think is to the individual person's preference. But I think if you use a good tup uh, on a good ewe, uh, you'll get, get a very, very nice lamb, which is wanted in the today's market. On our own farm uh, down in the south of England on the Hampshire-Wiltshire border, we have a, a breeding flock of 1,800 mules. Um, we've always had mules at home. And uh, although we've tried one or two of the other crosses, we've always come back to the north of England mule. All lambs sold at official NEMSA sales are tagged in the left ear with a metal tag incorporating the NEMSA logo, a capital M in a hexagon, and an individual flock number. This allows buyers to trace batches of lambs back to the breeder. Because all lambs at official sales are inspected by association representatives, the NEMSA logo is a guarantee that these sheep are correctly bred North of England mules and not one of the impersonations. At several shows and specialist NSA events, NEMSA exhibit live sheep 
and the association secretary and members present are always pleased to talk to interested farmers. The rise in popularity of the breed over the last 20 years has been dramatic and the North of England mule accounted for almost 40% of the crossbred ewe population at the last survey, making it more than three times as popular as any other cross. They are equally at home on intensive grass producing high lamb output per acre or on more extensive systems where a milky, easy care ewe is essential. Our original mule also thrives when wintered on roots. This adaptability, coupled with an unrivaled mothering ability, means that the breed has spread the length and breadth of the country. Many North of England mules successfully lamb outside, although their prolificacy and ease of management means they are particularly popular for indoor lambing. No other ewe will so readily follow a pair of newborn lambs out of a shed and into an individual lambing pen, even when lambing as ewe lambs. Versatility is synonymous with the breed, and being farmed successfully on a variety of systems in virtually every parish of the country is only part of the story. Another point is that their prime lambs are successfully marketed over 12 months of the year and by every conceivable carcass breed. Well, I think the North of England uh, mules speak for themselves. They've got size, they're good mullers, they're good wearers, uh, and they produce the goods, they produce the lambs. And one of the reasons why they're so popular in my part of the world, in the centre of it, is quite obviously that they fit well with the general farming economy. They fit well with the dairy stock, they fit well with some uh, arable farming. They're not uh, the great getters out that some sheep are. Uh, and at the end of the day, they've got the wool. Uh, but the mothering capability, I think, is something that always attracts me, and this is why I've certainly brought them in over years and been able to build on them and take advantage of them. And uh, I wouldn't wish to change from the North of England mule because uh, it gives me those qualities that we want in sheep in a mixed economy, a mixed type farming, and the sort of farming that we have in the centre of England. Why is it? that at shows and specialist NSA events, most terminal sire breeds invariably include a North of England ewe and her lambs on their promotional stands. It's because this ewe can be relied upon to produce a top quality product. The facts are that our mule is versatile enough to produce lambs to suit the supermarket and the export trade, as well as meeting the demand for heavier carcasses without excess fat and they can do it when mated to the popular Suffolk and Texel, as well as to the more recently imported breeds such as the Charolais, Rouge de la West and Bleu de Maine. Terminal sires such as these claim the ability to stamp progeny with their own fleshing qualities. Such a trait, coupled with the high milk output of crosses, such as the North of England mule, sets the seal on the UK's sheep stratification system. Each level or sector makes an important contribution and their sum total greatly enhances the efficiency of our sheep industry. In a constantly changing industry, the popularity of the North of England mule is one of the few things that remains unaltered. Other breeds come and go, but this cross remains the basis for success in flocks and systems throughout the UK. Do you think the North of England mule will adapt to the uh, climate in the European countries? Oh yes, I mean there's uh, areas where it might not adapt so well but no, no other sheep would either. Uh, and if you go into those areas, I mean take France, Normandy, Brittany, very similar climate to ourselves. You go into the Massif Central where we, we've been importing stock from for some time. Uh, there's a lot of uh, good sheep country down there. There's a lot of very similar country to the hill lands of, uh, of the north of England. Uh, and so I'm sure there's a lot of potential and a lot of hope, a lot of scope. And I'm a great optimist, particularly as far as uh, sheep are concerned and the north of England mule in particular. Whatever the future holds for the sheep farmer, profit will remain a primary concern. The north of England's record as a proven performer 
will mean that its characteristics of prolificacy, adaptability to any system, and easy care qualities, even at high stocking rates, remain the most important guarantees of financial success. That is why the North of England mule remains top.